Greetings and salutations, all you hardcore MMA fans out there, and the one and only Chael P. Sonnen says that's 15% of you. So let's get you out of the dark and get you into the light of what advanced MMA is all about. I'm your host, Dan the Wolfman. This is MMA Technical Breakdown. Please look at my very first episode published yesterday, which was all about what new weight classes there should be, what real fighter weights are, what people really weigh by fight time. Uh, based on my knowledge, uh, what the real weigh-in weigh percentage, uh, re-weigh-in percentage should be allowed, what the penalty should be, really in-depth stuff, what guys are getting away with, what testosterone ester they're taking uh, after weighing in, etc. and so forth. Really inside stuff. Why you should listen to me, guys, is I've been involved in MMA for 21 and a half years. Okay? I have four black belts. Daido Juko Kyokushin MMA style, Taekwondo. BJJ, and from Gene the Bell and Gorko Shevichian, mission in the highest on grappling system, mixing judo, jiu-jitsu, uh, sambo, and catch wrestling. I'm known as a catch wrestling guy. I also do Russian martial arts, all kinds of stuff. I fought pro um, back in the NHB days when things were unregulated. Went 3-3. Three and three. Yes, the records are, are real out there. Went 3-3, three and three, three first round submissions, and three losses to the very most experienced fighters, both at the time I fought them and now. Um, have, have something like uh, 250 or 300 fights uh, total um, nowadays and had the most at the time that I fought them. Two that fought for the late heavyweight title. Uh, guys, I've done MMA media if you're not familiar with me. And also I commentated the first five uh, live Pancrase events for UFC Fight Pass. Uh, besides that, I go back to early, early uh, MMA days, training with Dan Severn. Tito Ortiz, Tank Abbott, I mean, I'm an old school guy that stayed current up to the present and have seen all the evolutions of the sport. I uh, gave a lot of tidbits of what was really going on with the weight classes back then when they were adapted. Uh, check out the other video. Now, I don't want you to think this is the typical Monday morning analyst with some guy with his nose in the air and a BJJ blue belt trying to fool you are that he actually knows what the hell he's talking about because he doesn't. Okay, a BJJ blue belt doesn't grant you more knowledge than the fighters. Okay, Mr. Condescending. Uh, you never fought MMA. You never even sparred MMA. Get the F out with all of that. So hopefully, guys, you, you will like this. I'm going to break down. Uh, I'm going to mention something about the PFL. Then I'm going to break down the UFC Fight Night Singapore card. Cerrone versus Edwards in detail with all the techniques most people miss and completely break down the main event. But there's a lot that people miss every single time. And I go on all the forums and I check and nobody sees this stuff. The commentators always miss it. And they never see a lot of the things that I'm going to tell you about. So hopefully this is something you'll like me to do. Maybe publish it every Sunday night, Monday morning. Um, with whatever big MMA shows there are around that time. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm not going to scream at you uh, like I'm in a hair metal band. I'm not going to do that to try and get over with you like I'm super hyped up and knowledgeable. So, um, this is simply what I've dedicated my entire life to. 32 years of martial arts, 21 and a half in MMA. I used to send SEG, my newsletter, and recommended up-and-comers, two of which, Jeremy Horn and Noy Hernandez, they uh, did fight in the UFC after that. I used to talk to John Peretti and all those guys. So I go back, way back in the day. Um, uh, guys, somewhere over here, I'm going to put up five to the side, five uh, cards on YouTube. You'll be able to look at five videos. I'm going to give you breakdown uh, videos where you can look at me back in 2011, 2012, teaching knee kicks, preaching you need to understand calf kicks, calf kick defense, knee kick defense, um, hammer locks. I, I'm going to put videos, uh, maybe an interview with OSP, credit and catch wrestling, um, and, and some of these techniques we're going to break down, and shifting combos where I'm teaching that years ago. Okay, teach, teaching some of these shifting combos that were landed, we'll talk about years ago stuff that even the commentators often miss. Now this time, uh, uh, actually Hardy and um, John uh, did a pretty good job uh, catching a lot of stuff, but in general, commentators and other analysts miss a lot of things, like friggin' calling a sidekick to a knee, which is a foot turn this way, calling it an oblique kick, which is that way, okay? Or Joe Rogan, two pay-per-views, calling an elliptical kick until I called him out on it. We'll get into that. Okay, so anyway, 
Um, uh, just a little bit about PFL, guys. Uh, I'll talk about one fight. So any techniques that stand out to me or rare stuff or stuff that I think people will miss is stuff you'll be getting from me, guys. Ronnie Marks, who I uh, used to train with in Portland, Oregon, and Gracie Baja. Great guy, great jiu-jitsu. Um, he almost got a reverse knee bar or dog bar. He almost got a reverse knee bar and turned it in from bottom half guard and turned it into a sweep on uh, O'Connell. That fight had so many position changes, ground grappling position changes in the first round and scrambling going on. It was so high paced. Um, you know, it was awesome. It kind of reminded me of Arlovsky and Travis Brown, um, but with a lot of that taking place on the ground. It was so fast paced. Um, he did ultimately um, uh, get finished by O'Connell, who's trained by. Uh, my past foe, Jeremy Horn. Jeremy Horn, I'm sure, is a very knowledgeable guy and and, and a great uh, coach. You know, I, I roll, paid him to roll with him a half hour, a few years, MFS a few years after I fought him. I guess four years, five years after I fought him. And um, by doing so, I actually learned two, two techniques from him. So giving Jeremy Horn a little shout, I learned the neon throat choke, something you've seen Khabib do, double knee ride. And great for law enforcement that I've taught in law enforcement seminars. And um, also uh, butterfly backbreaker technique from guard. Of course, I got videos, guys, on my YouTube page, catchjitsu.com. Thank you, all 12,000 subscribers. Used to have 16,000. Uh, some Gracie made a claim and got that shut down. But, hey, we're building it back up. Um, a PFL uh, guy, shout out to Todd Harris, always professional. Um, when I interviewed him years ago, you can see an interview I did at UFC Tonight with Todd Harris. And um, good, did a good, great job calling the fights. Actually, they had a four-man booth, uh, which was pretty amazing. Uh, they pulled it off really well. Randy Couture, Boss Rutten, who I've trained with a couple times. Randy I trained with once. Uh, boss I've known for years. Uh, I trained with them right before. I flew to LA to train with them a day to get some confidence before I flew uh, to fight Kondo last minute when everyone was scared to fight Yuki Kondo. A month and a half after he beat Solid Barrel Bloody Through the Ropes in 22 seconds, everyone was turning down that fight. Anyway, um, PFL Fast Finishes, guys, uh, the new rewarding structure, if you're not familiar with what they're doing now, this was their second event. They've had like 50% finishing ratio, if not higher. Um, they reward three points for a win, okay, if you're in the tournament. They reward six points if you finish the fight in the first round, five if you finish it in the second, four points if you finish it in the third, three points if you win by decision, if you made weight, etc. and so forth, and everything was normal. This has led to very exciting fights. This is something that works. So now people are point playing to earn points to actually be ultimate fighting instead of ultimate point fighting, trying to win rounds, barely, which you know has played the sport for years. So um, by actually redoing points, maybe they've... They've, they're on to something. I think they're on to something. Um, and uh, it was a very good show. Uh, Eve Edwards, UFC 37.5, always there. Uh, on the bus, uh, on the way over, he looked very nervous, just giving you some old school knowledge. He looked very nervous. He had lost two in the UFC. He was a young kid. He was fighting a Brazilian guy. I looked at him. I said, kid, don't worry. This is, Tonight's your night. And he looks at me. I said, no, tonight's your night. You're going to knock out this Brazilian guy. He's not going to be able to deal with your stand-up, you're going to kick him in the head, etc. and so forth. Um, so anyway, shout out to those guys. So now guys, on a UFC Fight Night Singapore, Donald Cowboy Cerrone versus Edwards. A lot of techniques missed, even on the awesome undercard. Really good fights there in Singapore. I visited Singapore, went to Evolve a few years ago for a couple days. Uh, enrolled with a black belt, Lucky Machado, and another place you can look at that video, catch wrestling versus Jiu Jitsu, kind of. Um... Jiun Kim versus Fabian. Now, what I want you to look at in this fight that everyone missed again is 34 seconds left in the first round. She did the standing form slash elbow crank technique that I have multiple, like three videos on. I caught it. I knew what it was. Everyone missed it, just like they missed it when Mickey Gall got a knockout elbow crank to hook, just like I teach in, in those videos. Um, how I taught not only the elbow crank, but the forearm break to the right, you know, to the, the, to the hook or elbow. Um, that's what she did. She caught the forearm with the overhook. She twisted hard, um, and that was awesome. I know that she, that is what she did on purpose because I put congrats and put a post on her Facebook page. And uh, she, she liked the video, of course, showing the, the forearm and elbow cranks uh, video that I have. So um, 
Guys, this would obviously be much better in the future. Hopefully you guys will like this. I'll do it once a week. Hopefully it builds up. Hopefully you'll see what's up. And if someone like ESPN uh, gives me a, a real breakdown job or if uh, you know UFC or one of the big um, media outlets gives me something where I could get fight footage from the UFC, you know, this is stuff that they don't even show in the replays. You know, it'll be like, bam, here's where it was, pull that footage. Here's where it was, pull that footage. So in the future, like on ESPN, where there was own 30-minute uh, breakdown show, if it was a five-minute seg segment on one of Chael's shows, you know, think about how awesome that would be. And then I can also show clips from past videos where I've probably filmed it because I have 1,600 videos. And I've shown all these techniques for, you know, I was preaching calf kicks like crazy and showing videos in 2012 before any commentator in mid-2017. All the commentators started talking about calf kicks, low calf kicks. Um, you know, and I had articles on it on promomadeout.com in the past. Anyway, uh, guys, Uka Sasaki. Not a fan of his fake glove, running, running, sprinting from the corner, kneeled down, sprinting fake glove touch to single leg takedown he did. <coughs> move. Um, now I've trained with a guy. <laughs> uh, I trained with a guy in Japan. We saw each other on the street, actually. And he said, oh, here's this gym around the corner. And I followed him. And then he invited me to this other gym. And I trained with him at Miwi Gym. I got two or three videos uh, sparring him you guys can check out that are pretty interesting. Anyway... He got a really cool modified, kind of modified mount, even though the guy was flat on his back with his foot posted up, what's typically called a modified mount, um, where the guy's sideways or dorsal. Uh, he got basically a modified mount with a seatbelt hold of the arm pinned behind his back, ground and pound, 125 left in the second round to a really sick back take. So if you're on any of the like grappling BJJ forums, uh, BJJ Reddit, you've probably seen that slick back take. Uh, really awesome to the rear naked choke. Well, my sparring grids are interesting because I was 220 at the time. He's a 125 pound fighter. Um, and me trying to match speed of his up jab and stuff is probably pretty interesting. Uh, some of our grappling uh, might be interesting. And um, I also did a really rare technique no one understands. I call it the jack in the box or front rear naked takedown, which is really about spinal destabilization, which is, which is really about biomechanics, really high level stuff. Um, took him right down his butterfly guard and then passed aside uh, or half guard, something like that. Um, so you might want to take a look at that to see what that is. And then go, oh, that's just because you're big and strong. And then you go, oh, well, then I have videos showing against much bigger guys and uh, to a to big cop uh, at an LE seminar, a cop seminar um, I did, you know, when, when a suspect's trying to grab, you know, something off your tool belt when your weapon's a uh, taser, gun, whatever, off your tool belt or uh, aspartame, whatever the case may be. Um, okay, guys, now on a match, Shell versus Inouye. It was a decision, pretty good fight. Tons of outside calf kicks by both guys, especially Snell. Um, look over there, I'll put one or two videos, maybe a seminar video, maybe the 2012 video, where not only did I show calf kicks, but I showed three different ways of defending it. When are guys and coaches out there going to learn to defend it? I don't know. I don't know. There's a great way of checking. You can break the guy's leg, throw a calf kick. He throws one back, you break it, just like Malapet did. Okay, who, who used to be around MTA when I used to teach Jiu-Jitsu at, at Muay Thai Academy uh, out in California. Um, guys aren't doing that. You can do lift leg, um, uh, which Raquel Pennington did, lift leg defense a, a little bit. Um, and you can ride it out if you need be, uh, if you have a good stance, if you have a good base, if you have a proper stance for MMA. If you have a toed-in stance, if you're narrow, if you're sideways, then things can be really bad for you. It can sweep you off your ass, as we've seen Benson Henderson do to people and many others. Footage of me at King's MMA doing it uh, a week before Benson did it to Nate Diaz, just like I said was going to happen. And I even said, uh, Nate and his crew, uh, Gracie, uh, even said the videos which I saw before that fight. Nate tried it once, but he did did the, did the uh, check incorrect angle and it still swept him if you go back to that fight. Anyway, guys, a little long way to put it, but this is really a lot of stuff you're going to learn. Okay, next on, Ziyan Uh Not the greatest fight, but good Sonda style lead leg kicks and distance control. You know, I coached a lot of top Sonda fighters that turned into pretty good MMA fighters, a couple of them. My top student, I think he's 8-1 or 9-1, 9-0 now, something like that. 
uh, when I was coaching in Egypt, dealt with a lot of Sonda fighters, I was coaching a lot of Sonda fighters. Um, so you got to look for the lead leg, you know, you'll see a lot of Sonda fighters in one, you'll, you'll see that, where they can use that lead, kind of hopping inside, kick very well, bring it up to a hook kick to the head, uh, etc. and so forth. Next, Matthews versus uh, Anza. Uh, Matthews did land a beautiful knee tap from collar tie, 325 uh, left in round one. Uh, which I have a collar tie video showing four techniques. That's one of them. Uh, John uh, did did call that, so that was good on his part. Uh, ground and pound to short choke. Uh, you can see a video of me sparring Anza when he got the call the night before, two weeks before his UFC debut. So I do have a full round of me sparring Anza if you want to check that out on catchizu.com, which you can, could go to my website or my YouTube page away. Now, um, Keenan TKO's Eldana with a Cobra Dart Punch and Turtle Ground and Pound 20 seconds left in round two. You know, that's not a normal cross. It's a Cobra Dart Punch, which I showed a long time ago, which some Muay Thai people have done, which Dart Punch certain boxers have done, which Eddie Alvarez, Dominic Cruz, Fedor and Melinenko have done, which uh, Golovkin nails people with. So um, it was a Cobra Dart Punch. You usually weave that in on un un underhook for a purpose of a tight waist takedown of the right or go the other direction with a knee tap. I have a popular knee tap video, Cobra Dart Punch and knee tap video on that. Um, but we saw that punch a few times this UFC, which is really interesting. And we're going to start seeing more 12 power 3 combos which is in my system, which is a Cobra Dart Punch to left hook. Again, like Triple G. Is used effectively. Uh, young TKO's die. 30 seconds left, round one, by elbow and punch blitz against catch. We saw some beautiful elbows this UFC. That was a beautiful elbow, and then boom, punch blitzing him against the cage. Yadane KO's Arantes with full sense of security. <laughs> really, that's what he did. With 20 seconds left in the round, he's kind of hanging out and over in a light overhook on against the cage, pushing him up against the cage. Throws one left knee to the body, waits another like 12 seconds or so, does nothing, and bam, right over the top, knocks him down. Beautiful. Lured him in with a false sense of security. Kind of like, okay, we're going to accept to rest the end of the round to get a little, you know, 20 seconds extra, which guys do a lot of times. Uh, and then, boom, he nailed him with that elbow. It was beautiful. So, uh, lured him in with a false sense of security. Um... Uh, he had beautiful seamless shifting during punching combos. Uh, Yan did, uh, Takeo Ishihara in the next fight. So Yan with some seamless shifting, nice stuff, punching combos, Takeo Ishihara, starting about 202 left in round one. So really there's a pretty long sequence there, about 30 seconds I think, with a, a lot of shifts uh, in there, just, just really seamless, really good stuff. You see more and more shifting, blitz attacks, uh, stuff that I talk about. I'll put a video again up there that I filmed years ago in the Middle East, um, kind of explaining a bit about shifting and whatnot, and showing uh, two of the combinations, one of which was used beautifully. I'll get to that in a bit, and, and, and has been used in the past by TJ Dillashaw. That's what's called TJ Dillashaw shifting combo or something. Um, and uh, recently it was used by Thug Rose as well. Um, okay, now on to the main card. Awesome fight. I love this fight. Jingling versus Abe because both guys were doing really good shifting stuff. So lots of shifting and switch punch combos by Abe and side kicks to the knee. Of course, I've always been talking about side kicks and knee kick, knee, uh, oblique kicks to the knee. Um, the Li, Ch Li Jingling cracked him with a Cobra Dart punch. And then 250 left round two. And that's where the hand goes first. Cobra Dart punch. Hand goes first. Not grounding and then punch, which is slow, which the punch is the end, is typically how you get power, but it's the punch leading first. Loose and flow, Conor McGregor style. So, um, anyway, then he had 250 left in round two, kneeled him with my switch gallop pop right overhand counter corker punch, I call it, the counter corker punch. With, uh, which is exactly what I showed in that video, that TJ Dill saw switch punch video, and exactly like Thug Rose used. Um, nailed him with it. Beautiful, beautiful stuff by the leech. And then he started like, you know, that was him like going, 
there was like a shift in it where he just went like hardcore kickboxing probably around and a half in like oh you want to show you know that advanced shit and the leech was like i know some advanced shit too and he started doing some shit shifting stuff and switch punch uh, occasionally to um kind of just kind of started loosening him up and having fun out there actually because he was, he was a beast he was in control um there was a lot of high level stuff in that in that fight it was a really good fight um um, Abe used a my sliding inside calf kick one two I filmed in two thousand two. I'll put that up there. There's a couple videos where I show it, and I'll put one of them up there. Um, at the towards the end, and then Leech another dart punch. Ten seconds left, so that's the third dart punch of the night. Um, that was done really well uh, with your body weight following. Timed it perfectly behind it, um, so it hits like a semi trailer. Uh, and it, and uh, anyway, leads by decision. Okay, Jessica Rose Clark versus Jessica I. So so fight. The first round was really bad, actually. They're a foot up, far too far out of distance. A lot of unfortunately WMMA fights are still that way until they get used to getting hit. They're like an extra foot outside. It's like the rare Errol Flynn knife dueling. No offense, Matt. I covered WMMA before anyone else did the first ever event um, in America Hook and Shoot Revolution in 2002. I covered for. I drove. 12 hours to uh, cover for uh, Fight Sport Magazine, Black Belt's Fight Sport Magazine. Um, anyway, I got better after that, and then uh, basically an almost all striking affair. I did get nice inside trip in the third round, Ouchigari, uh, then passed the side mount at the end to finish the fight, which definitely helped her win the decision, in my opinion. Um, and boy, was she emotional after the fight. Probably rightly so, but that was a very interesting, very emotional uh, after fight speech. Okay, over in St. Pru in the co-main event versus Tyson Pedro, um, or the Pedro, whatever you want to call it. Uh, OSP, um, man, interesting character. Uh, I interviewed him back at Strike Force. Maybe that will be one of the videos I put in there. Um, starts with Pedro. OSP started slow, man. He usually starts slow. Pedro landed two beautiful question mark Brazilian kicks. Boom! Beautiful. And then OSP a couple times actually got a bit of Uchimata to clinch in the counter takedowns. Um, so using that hard overhook wizard Uchimata a couple times to slow things down. Okay, and boom, they land and, and Pedro goes face down turtle for a second. OSP instantly grabs his right arm and tries to get double wrist control on it to shove it behind his back to get a hammer lock. Of course that was missed. It was always missed, even though he got a win with it and not really credited in UFC before with the same turtle hammerlock. The same turtle hammerlock. So anyway, totally missed. They, 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 he turns to his back and goes in a half guard. Okay, then he locks up the uh, Kimura, which really wasn't called a Kimura until it was called a Kimurata in the late 70s by a Brazilian newspaper. If you really want to know your history, it wasn't called a Kimura back when the match happened between Kimura and Helio. Okay, it was a Udi Grammy and the worst lock long before that. Um, so anyway, he gets a double wrist lock and uh, straightens it out and fishes it to a super rare in MMA straight arm lock using his elbow as the V fulcrum underneath it properly instead of the arm flat underneath, which might get you the tap in training, but not in a real fight. He posted the V and he got that high fulcrum. And uh, man, I have not seen that move used in high level MMA anyway since my first famous combat wrestling instructor, Dan the Beast Severin, uh, I think it was Pride 1 or 2, whenever he was in Pride for the first time, either Pride 1 or 2, um, when he got that. So he fished it like you're supposed to, bam, old Shooto lock flow series, like I used to train in official Shooto system, you know, between the top wrist lock, the bottom wrist lock, or double wrist lock, and the uh, dumbbell drum crank and the straight arm bar. In half curve. Really rare. So OSP guys, OSP has gotten a calf slicer before he was in strike force. Okay, leg win, rare calf slicer. This is a huge light heavyweight that did that. No one's even aware of that. He's gotten a hammer lock. He's gotten two Von Flu chokes. Uh, went for a hammer lock again and got a rare straight arm bar in half guard, which makes it even more rare because he's a, a, a beast of an athlete. Um, so, I think on camera he credited, I got him credit cut wrestling before, um, but, or we talked about it right after, I forget. But anyway, yeah, he, his coaches definitely, they're, they're all about the catch wrestling. 
or Kenshitsu style. And um, anyway, guys, so that was OSP. OSP is an exciting guy, you know, he gets some of these crazy knockouts and uh, gets these crazy submissions. Of course, I love those rare submissions. And now, on to the main event. Orthodox fighter, Don, the Cowboy Cerrone, fighting Southpaw, Leon Edwards. Around one, we had superior striking and distance control right off the bat from Leon Edwards. Big elbow, big left elbows all through the fight, and big left straight punches, some left hooks. Cerrone blooded up right eye right off the bat. Cerrone uh, does land two lead side kicks right away to the body. Don't see that a lot from the Cowboy. So, boom, keep an eye on that later on going in the fight. Definitely 10.